Hey everyone, this is Tony Teaches Tech. I'm Tony, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to install Nginx from source and along the way explain to you why you would want to do such a thing. So let's go ahead and get started here. I have a, a fresh install of Ubuntu 20.04 here. I'm logged in via SSH, and I just did my apt get update, apt get upgrade, and now I'm ready to install Nginx. And let's just confirm that it's not already installed on our system. So type in nginx and you'll see that the nginx command cannot be found. Now, typically you would install nginx via a package manager like apt or apt-get, um, but we're not gonna do that because by installing nginx from source, you have a lot of flexibility as far as what modules you want to include in your install. So um, we're gonna go ahead and do that in this tutorial. And the first thing we wanna do is to get the Nginx source files from the official Nginx website. So we can do that by going to the official website, which is nginx.org. Okay, there's also an nginx.com, but that's a commercial version of Nginx. We want nginx.org. And in here, we want to go to the download section and you'll see that the latest copy, the stable version of Nginx is at uh, version 1.18.0. So right click on this link and copy the link address. Open up your terminal window again. And what we're gonna do is do a wget and then that URL. So uh, it's a tar.gz file and this is just gonna download that onto our system. So we have that on our system now, Nginx version 1.18.0. Let's expand this archive with tar-xzvf and then the name of the file. So you can do a tab complete to complete that, hit enter, and that's gonna create this directory here called Nginx and then the version number. So let's go into that directory, take a look around. And um, this is this is your typical, uh, uh, build building from source on Ubuntu or Linux uh, Debian type of system. So you have a configure file. You want to execute the configure file. That's going to check your system for uh, the, the appropriate dependencies being available. If that passes, then you want to execute the make command, which is uh, going to essentially do the do the build from source and then make install is going to put the uh, whatever um, whatever it created during the make process into your system. So it's going to install it into your system. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, but first, uh, because I've been through this process before, I know that there are some dependencies that we need to get. Okay, so let's go ahead and get those dependencies first. And we are going to use a package manager to get the dependencies. And those dependencies look like this. So apt get install build essential. That's going to be our C compiler, GCC, uh, Zlib 1G, and the dev version of that, which is for gzip compression for our web server. And then lib SSL, that is for enabling SSL certificates and HTTPS for our website. So execute that. And um, I, like I said, I've been through this process before. So those are already installed on the system. And now what we want to do is execute our configure. Okay, our configure, configure. <laughs> okay, so um, I do have that command here and I'm gonna paste it in so it looks like this. So this configure file here, we're gonna do a relative execute of that and pass it our sbin path at this directory, conf path, error log path, HTTP log path, um, our process ID path, and this is one of the modules that I'm talking about with HTTP SSL module. So where, where's this coming from? If you go back to nginx.org, and we go to documentation, we can see a list of all the available modules here. And, you know, we got the gzip one. Um, we got the, if I can move this bar down here, whoops, not doing too good with the mouse. HTTPS should be down here. There it is, HTTP SSL module. So that's that's where that comes from. So um, that, let's go ahead and try this. Let's see what happens. We'll execute that and configures checking the system to make sure we have everything. And it came back with an error. So it says um, the HTTP rewrite module requires the PCRE library. So we can either disable that or we can install that dependency and then specify this, um, this argument in the configure. So I think 
the best thing to do is to actually install that. So let's do an apt get install. And then this is how you install that library, the PCRE library. So we'll do that. And I, I mean, I kind of knew this ahead of time that we would go through this process, but I just wanted to show you that uh, this this is the process that you process that you have to go through when you are building Nginx from source. You might have to go back, get the dependency, come back to configure, and then reconfigure it. So let's try that again. And as it suggests, that we have to add that dash dash with PCRE at the end. So let's try configure one more time, see if we can get past that same point that we did last time. And we did, so we're all good. Um, now let's just take a look here. Um, everything looks pretty much the same. We got a make file now, so now we can execute the make command. And what this is gonna do, this takes a little bit, probably like a minute or so, uh, depending on your system resources, but this is um, actually doing the building, building from source. Okay, so we have the source, and now we're gonna build from source. That's what this is doing. It's, Let's, uh, we'll give it another couple seconds, but if it does not finish, then we'll go and pause the video and I'll catch back up with you when it finishes. All right, that has finished. And now the last step of building from source is due to the make install. And that's gonna put the, the files that we just generated into our system. So type make install. And that was really quick and we are now good to go. So um, the next thing we wanna do is to actually start up nginx so we can do that with the simple nginx command we now have that on our system and let's just verify that it's running so if we do ps aux and then we'll grep for nginx we will see uh whoops if i spell nginx ng inx we will see that nginx is running we have the master master process and the worker process too um we can use uh let's let's just see what type of things we can do with nginx. So nginx h. Um, the one I want to point out here is the signal. Sends a signal to the master process. You can do stop, quit, reopen, or reload. So let's do nginx s stop. And now if we grep our process list again, we won't see that nginx is running anymore. Um, the the thing next that is optional, like at this point in the tutorial, you have Nginx, you have built it from source, but kind of as a bonus, if you want Nginx to start from uh, the time that the system turns on, so from boot, we can use um, system D to do that. Okay, so that in the next part of this tutorial, we'll go ahead and make Nginx start from boot. And we can do that. There is, um, actually, I have it open here in the background there is on nginx.com. Okay, so nginx.com, I'll have this link down below. There is a template essentially that you can use to create a service for nginx that allows you to, it's kind of like a wrapper around the signal that we just, the signal uh, nginx-s stop command that we wrote. Um, you can start, stop, uh, reload, restart, and boot start on boot so that's what this is going to allow you to do let's go ahead and create a file at this directory so i'm going to copy that back in our server i'll make a file i'm going to use vim text editor here at uh, system d system nginx.service and then for the contents of the file we'll, we'll mostly use this as is but there's a couple things we have to change so let's copy this and paste that in there um, the only thing that we want to change here is, uh, if you remember from our configure, uh, we had the PID file located at var slash var slash run, and then our uh, our actual binary was going to be in the bin directory, the user bin directory, not the user s bin directory. So let's save that, and now that that's uh, installed, or we, now that we created that file, we can use system CTL, system CTL, um, to start, stop, reload, restart Nginx. So system CTL, start Nginx, and now Nginx should be up and running again. We can check that with the PSAUX command. There it is, we got our master process, our worker process. Um, let's do a system CTL status Nginx, and you'll see that we have uh, Nginx, the Nginx service is active and running, um, and you got some good debug information here. 
Now the last part to this is to enable Edge, Nginx to start on boot. You can do that with systemctl enable Nginx. And this is a one, one time and done thing. Um, once you enable Nginx via the command that we just executed, then you don't have to worry about it again. So let's reboot our system. And I it would have been a good idea to check the uh, IP address um, to show you what's actually going on. So let's uh, let's do that while it's shut off, just to show you that that's the case. So if we go to this IP address, it's not gonna do anything because our system is rebooting. It might be offline. It, well, it's definitely offline. Um, but if we wait, you know, another 15 to 30 seconds, hopefully no more than that, as the system comes back online, we should see our default Nginx page, and there it is, uh, show up. So our system's now back online, and because we enabled Nginx to start on boot, it automatically started the web server and started serving pages, and this is the default Nginx uh, web page. So, um, cool. So I, I think that's it, guys. If you have any questions about um, building Nginx from source or getting it to start on system boot, let me know in the comments below. I'll do my best to help you out. Check out some of my other Nginx videos over here. And if you do, I'll see you in the next one.